Hey! How are you? Spoiler alert. Uh, this video contains a whole bunch of spoilers, especially pertaining to the Raid series. So if you haven't seen the Raid series yet, go watch it before you watch this video uh, if you don't want to get spoiled. Okay? Okay. So, I'm working on a pretty large Tarkov lore-related project that's been taking me a few months, and it's probably going to take me a little bit longer because, truth be told, it's a pretty big puzzle. Um, it's full of tons of characters, uh, some we're familiar with, most, most of which we aren't. Uh, lots of background information about the city, its roots, how it got to be here, uh, and even more stuff having to do with plot lines, some that haven't even come to fruition yet, and others that probably will still have yet to be determined by Nikita and, uh, and his team as they continue to kind of weave this ever-changing landscape that is Escape from Tarkov and its its history, you know? Both both of which are pretty crazily intriguing and and punishing. You know, Mother Tarkov always gets her cut, right? So while I'm working on all of that, with the culmination of the Raid series, we met a new shady character. His code name is Black Fox, who ended the life of our beloved protagonist, Skiff, all too soon too soon so these guys clad in black with super advanced weaponry compared to the rest of the region decked out with body armor nvgs the works they get called in seemingly from a phone call made by ogrezek and orchestrated a wave of scavs to attack the port fortress while simultaneously mounting their own insurgency laying down these backpack charges full of c4 breaching the wall and killing everyone inside and leaving with what seemed to be an extremely vital piece of information. Terra Group really, really didn't want that one getting out, right? But who the hell are these guys? And where did they come from? And what does this mean for Tarkov? So I've got some theories, and I'm sure a lot of the rest of the player base does as well, and I'm sure this is going to be another one of those opinionated things where the player base wants certain things to go a certain way, and maybe they won't, and you know, everywhere in between. So for this video, we're going to talk about who the heck we think these guys are, the theories in place, what their purpose in the lore is, and, you know, maybe even some ideas on what Tarkov might have in store for us moving forward. From here, I'll end up kicking off the Tarkov lore series that I've been working on forever in time. This is kind of a passion project for me, so bear with me while I get it all, I guess, put together where we're going to explain the origins of the city, its major players, and the theories surrounding where we go from here. There are those that believe that these PMCs are U.S. military or a yet-to-be-named independent major faction working outside of the Bear, USEC, and Terra Group conflict. However, the most likely theory is that they work for Terra Group, and I'll explain why. For starters, we know that the leader of the group, Black Fox, speaks English, because we saw that in Raid Episode 5. This is Black Fox. Jackpot. Which means that he's not from this region. But he still is inside of Tarkov somehow, along with the rest of his team, and given the way that they're dressed, the prep for a silent strike, and their ability to create a diversion with this scav army pushing into the base with assistance of large caliber machine gun fire and 120 millimeter howitzers, we can assume that this group is an elite special force, not yet seen in Tarkov. They look like they're right out of the pages of some Call of Duty Black Ops lore sent in as a sweeper team, and I believe by Terra Group higher-ups. As Ogrezek on the phone referred to the Terra Group hard case as your lost luggage, and not some or the lost luggage. We can only assume that this was a phone call to a Terra Group member, given that they were talking about the case using a possessive descriptor, and not just a general one. To understand this even further, we have to look broader than just the immediate escape from Tarkov lore. We have to look outside of Tarkov into other forms of history surrounding this region. For those unfamiliar, Tarkov isn't the first game in Tarkov lore. There's another game that shares both the story and assets of Tarkov called Contract Wars. Contract Wars is a free-to-play first-person browser-run shooter that looks an awful, awful lot like Tarkov. 
That's because it shares assets with the Escape from Tarkov game. Seriously, it uses the same engine, the same source code, the same elements, even the same named variables inside of the code itself, but also is part of the lore of Tarkov. Having taken place during this conflict, prior to the timeline of Tarkov where we are now. It was in the earlier days of the conflict. Escape from Tarkov is a sequel to Contract Wars. Part of Contract Wars lore also includes the mention of an uber elite special ops force known as the Black Division. On the Contract Wars website, in a section titled Gameplay Highlights, toward the end there's the mention of the elite Black Division group as a special award. Text found on a couple of different forums reads as though inside of Contract Wars, the Black Division is a group of ultra-elite professional operators, a unit of the most powerful or best PMCs, Terror Group's private kill squad. Now, there's also this other little screen cap of someone being able to get a Black Division style of award and a roulette wheel, but this was just a credit award and had like a 1 in 10,000 chance of happening. So we're just going to sidestep this one as it seems like more of a special prize rather than an, an induction into its ranks. But notice the logo. The idea of Black Division being a private kill squad of terror group seems to be the most likely answer. And the one that I've been leaning on since I saw Raid Episode 5 and its airing. Raid Episode 5 brought about an introduction of the Black Division into Tarkov lore, at least in my opinion but this seems to have been even further solidified in some of the most recent screenshots shared by BSG. On Twitter and Instagram, BSG released a photo of someone hard at work in BSG's studio. On the left-hand monitor, you can clearly see a Black Division logo in the form of an armband being affixed to the arm of a PMC model. But of course, we have no idea whether this will be something earned, something bought, or something looted at random. And it seems to me a little bit suspect that they would release this screen cap of a Black Division armband the day after, or two days after, Raid Episode 5 aired. A little bit too coincidental, if you ask me. But now here is where the rabbit hole has a fork in it. Obviously, we can see that the Black Division armband will be introduced into Tarkov at some point in the future. Maybe even super soon soon, TM? But does that mean that Black Division would become an achievable thing in the game for PMCs to be able to one day become a part of? Personally, this is what I'd love to see come out of Tarkov in the future, and I hope this is where Nikita is going with it. Although I know there's a lot of the player base that doesn't agree with me. You see, in Contract Wars, there was a part of the game where PMCs were able to become a member of Black Division. It was something that was rumored that the devs would handpick people to become part of it. And I don't know if the devs would necessarily go that far. But Nikita has always repeatedly talked about a karma system. Do good things, build karma. Do bad things, lose karma, etc. So I'm wondering if the karma system would end up being built around something faction specific. Would perks maybe associated with it? For instance, there's this massive humanitarian style effort being conducted by Therapist, where she's trying to help out people around her, like a Russian lockdown city version of Doctors Without Borders. In helping her, perhaps your karma generates you better pricing, specialized meds, extra training that allows you to heal yourself faster than normies or people of different factions, etc. Because maybe you get specialized training. Whereas in the sense of something like Black Division, perhaps there's a hidden traitor with whom no one knows the identity of and can't even see on their character screen until some significantly later part of the game where they finally end up revealing themselves through having just earned it somehow. Not that you ever actually get to know them, and their identity maybe remains shrouded in mystery, but by aligning yourself with this rogue faction of stone-cold killers, perhaps now you answer to a higher power, and you get access to better weapon systems or more high-tech munitions than any other faction in the game. The possibilities around some kind of reward system like this, based on the factions you align yourself with, could be nearly without end. And the polarizing idea of something like this is also kind of cool. Personally, I'd love to see more of this alignment or polarization style of thinking. When you help one side, you begin to alienate others. A second smaller theory is that this faction would be developer-run, much like I had mentioned earlier, and would only hand-select people to join Black Division later on down the line, only accepting the best of the best. I think this would probably be too hands-on and a little nitpicky for the devs, 
and would likely result in a lot of grief being given from the player base as opposed to a system where any player has the potential to achieve that rank. The final theory is that the Black Division will be NPC only, like buffed scav raiders with god aim that could use the best of the best possible gear. In the spirit of this last one, I thought of a scenario that might be pretty cool. On some extremely rare occasion with some 15 or so minutes left in a raid, the server sends in a sweeper team in the form of Black Division operatives. Once spawned, they pursue and eliminate anything and everything that moves until either everyone on the map is dead or the raid instance ends. While the last idea of this doomsday or sweeper team style of scenario seems enticing, as it should be or would be an event-like element, you know, 1% of the time, one every 100 raids or so, if they're done rare enough, it could generate some serious wows from the crowd, if you know what I mean. Although cool, I think the last one could also possibly be outside of the scope of what we could expect, though. Depending on how often this happens, hackers could have a field day collecting all of the valuable loot from all of the corpses of people that were involved. All they'd have to do is, I guess, wait. At any rate, with BSG involving lesser-known aspects of the lore and things that people that haven't been very accustomed to these little extras that haven't really been discussed but end up being integral parts of the story once revealed is pretty cool. There's a lot going on inside of Tarkov with the lore that a lot of people don't know, haven't become aware of, or maybe even just glazed over. For instance, did you know that the, uh, the EMP was caused by the cult? We'll talk about that one in the next video. Thank you guys for coming and watching this. I hope it was uh, as entertaining for you as it was cool for me to talk about. I, I love this <laughs> And I will, uh, I'll see you in the next one, okay? Peace.